Hey guys, Daily Tech here. Today we're going to be looking at a few different ways you can position the PS Move controller on your headset for head tracking when doing VR games with Steam VR. The purpose of this video is to see if we can get the best tracking possible by strapping the controller to a few different spots on your headset. Now traditionally, if you've been following my videos already, you'll notice that I always keep the controller on the side. Now this has always given me really smooth tracking and everything seems to work really well. And by some of the gameplay demos you've seen, it almost seems kind of flawless. But there is one problem. The problem is, is that when I turn my head 180 degrees around, the relationship of the controllers actually get a little bit off-center. And I think I know the reason for this. Now let me show you exactly what I'm talking about here. So if you were to look at this headset from top down, you'll notice that when I turn my head, the controller actually flips over to the other side. Now according to FreePie, which is doing the tracking on this, it only tracks the controller itself. It doesn't track any kind of twisting. That's done by the phone gyros. So what happens is, is when the controller moves side to side like this, it can't tell if I'm going like this, or if I'm twisting like that. So what it's actually doing is putting my head and displacing it over to the side instead of knowing that it's turning. So now let's take a look in game to see exactly what I'm talking about. So for this example, we're gonna use Out of Ammo. If you haven't seen this game yet, I've got a demo of it at the top right of your screen up there. Now the reason why I picked this game is because there's guns with a scope on it, and that'll be the easiest way for you to be able to tell. So moving into the target range, you'll see that I'll be able to shoot the targets here with relative ease. But as soon as I turn around, you'll notice that the gun goes far off to the side of me and I have to hold my hands way off to the side just to see down the scope. Obviously you can always account for that a little bit in game and it's, and it's something that you can just get used to, but I, I don't want to do that anymore. So let's go back to the drawing board, try a few things out and see if we can get any kind of improvements. So my first thought was to take the controller and just lay it down flat on the top like this. This way, now the bulb's a little bit more centered, so that way it's not going to be way off to the side and turning us like crazy, which in theory makes a lot of sense. But I did notice a few immediate problems. First being, is the controller is just way too floppy on your head. If I moved anywhere, this thing would just roll around and I knew it would fall off within minutes of playing, even with a whole ton of Velcro all over it. Secondly, when you've got the controller on your head, the bulb's being covered by the front of my head. So any trackers behind me will never see it. Again, giving you poor tracking. So this idea, I decided to can right away. So my next idea was to try to keep the bulb center still, but also get it up a little bit higher. Now, what I decided to do is put a little piece of Velcro up on the top here. And what this does, let me show you. Now I could actually stand the controller up like this. This would elevate the bulb a little bit, allow the cameras behind to see me a bit better and still allow the cameras in the front to see too. Moving this around as well, seems to stay put pretty good. And all the weight's just sitting on the top of your head, so you really don't feel any of it. Also, it gets the bulb a little more central on my head, so that way when I do make a turn, it's not moving around all over the place displacing my head. Check it out. Seems to make a lot more sense, so I decided to give this one a go. Now going back into the game, everything seemed to work pretty well. I was able to hit the targets again, and everything tracked pretty good. And then the real test came. I had to turn around and see if I could still see down the scope properly. And you know what? It worked out great. But there was one thing that wasn't so great. Is that depending on where I was standing in the room, the screen would get shaky a little bit. And that's kind of telling me that some of the trackers are losing the controller. And now that I look at the video, I can see that it's because the controller's on far too much of an angle, so picture yourself being a tracker, and if I look up at all, it's gonna go like this, and now that's completely gone. Now if I'm standing too far forward, those back cameras are too far away to pick it up properly. So depending where I was standing in the room, I ended up with different results. And that's the last thing I need to worry about is where I'm standing just so I can get tracked properly. So in theory it was great, but it didn't work out as I hoped. So I thought to myself, I need to get that ball a little bit higher. So what I did is I took a little piece of styrofoam, stuck it here on top. This way I can prop the controller up a little bit more and hopefully get a better line of view. Now I tested this again and I got about the same results as I did last time. It was a little bit better. I could look down a little bit higher and a little bit lower before the cameras lost my head, but inevitably it wasn't very good. 
So I decided, what the heck, let's go a little bit higher to see what happens. So I took a bigger piece of styrofoam, stuck it on top now, and then propped the controller on top of that. Now this looked like it was going to be promising, it looked like it was going to go high enough, but then the center of gravity of the controller was just way too high and it was flopping around all over the place. It was uncomfortable and I'm sure it was going to fall off eventually. So unfortunately I couldn't keep working with that either. So after all this was done, I ended up making some progress. I figured out a few things that worked, a few things that didn't work. And I realized that having the ball of the controller centralized on the headset helped out a lot. But one thing I realized is that the way the controller is right now, I'm probably not going to get the best tracking. So we're going to have to open this thing up and start really modifying it. So be sure to tune into part two of this when I rip the controller apart, start placing it in different spots and seeing if we can get things even better. Now if watching this video gave you any kind of ideas on how to do this better, please let me know in the comments below, because I'm dying to see what you guys come up with. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time in part two.